Welcome to our presentation on From Service to Home Ownership. Uh, today we have a special edition. We have Ben with Blue Star Families and Karen with Chicago Veterans going to be talking about their organization and what they do for the veteran community and also share content like this that's important for veterans to understand no matter where you're at in the timeline for home ownership how the program works and how you can take advantage of it for you and your family. So I'll kick it up to Karen to start us off. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Karen, uh, Executive Director of Chicago Veterans. We are a veteran-based uh, organization in Chicago and the Chicagoland area, uh, but we are uh, open to anyone really just uh, submitting an inquiry or if we can help you, we will find a way and a resource for you. What we do is resource navigation for veterans. We help you find, uh, you know, any sort of resources or benefits that you might be looking for. So anybody transitioning out of the military, if you're looking for an organization or you're looking for a benefit or VSO or, hey, what else can I do um, after my service? You uh, can absolutely reach out to us and we will find a way uh, to connect you to the many organizations that exist. We know that it uh, it is a difficult process. Uh, and when you transition, there's so much thrown at you. So most of us are veterans or currently serving. And so we are looking for veterans that are, you know, needing some assistance to, to navigate all the resources and, and everything in the community from education to housing to uh, VA benefits, you, you name it. We also build a very strong uh, social community. So if you're looking to find the tribe, to find some more battle buddies that can connect with you about your experience, we are here for that. So we hope that uh, you, know, you can build a community, reconnect and, and find a network. And if you're looking to do any of that, you can absolutely reach us at that QR code that's below. And uh, chicagovets.org is our email, um, our website. Feel free to reach us there. Uh, but thank you, David, for, for hosting us and having us on here. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. And Ben? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for um, having me as well. Um, I'm Ben Gould. I'm the Chicago Chapter Director for Blue Star Families. Um, and our organization was started in 2009 um, by military spouses to empower military families to thrive as they serve. Um, we have a variety of different initiatives that we focus on, but some of the, the key ones are our Military Family Lifestyle Survey, which we work with Syracuse University Institute for Military and Veteran Families to track and analyze the difficulties that military families are going through, usually between eight and 10,000 respondents um, we have every year. And we use that important data to then advocate um, for policy changes among uh, military leadership, uh, lawmakers, elected officials, and also to inform other military and veteran service organizations um, to help address those needs. Um, one of our biggest initiatives, which is actually happening next uh, week, is Blue Star Welcome Week, um, because every year about 600,000 uh, military members and their family will be relocating to new communities. Um, we've established uh, a week to um, make sure that we're able to welcome them to the new community, um, have events um, so they can get connected to both their, their military and non-military neighbors um, and start to build a foundation of resources and support system in their local community. Um, here in Chicago, we'll be doing a White Sox game and a tour of the Field Museum um, among some other different um, events. And you can look and find the nearest events in your area to see what type of uh, Welcome Week events um, are occurring. In terms of uh, careers, um, we have our platform, which is called uh, Spouse Force, um, where we have a pipeline of military um, spouses um, who are looking for employment and then connect them with employers looking to hire military uh, connected members. Um, we've been able to refer um, over a thousand people to our partners for, that provide a variety of training. Um, and also direct hires about 700 um, last year. And so if you would like more information, um, you could go to bluestarfam.org and I'll put it in the, the chat. But uh, thank you so much for um, having me and feel free to reach out with any uh, questions. That's awesome, Ben. I might actually be reaching out for that spouse employment piece and Lord is too, because we're always looking for good people and it's, you know, it's kind of yeah. tough to, to find them. Uh, especially having that military background uh, helps significantly on that. So thank you again, both for uh, talking about your organization and letting us be a part of educating the military community. 
Uh, I'll pop you guys off. And then uh, if you guys have any questions, just please let me know. But uh, thank you again for the uh, introductions on that. All right, guys, welcome. Um, as we gonna, as we kind of dive into this, we're going to talk about what the title is from service to home ownership, uh, talking about the various aspects of the program. Now, a lot of the stuff we talk about is pretty high level because we would need like what, Lord, it's like six hours to explain like every <laughs> single benefit and everyone's situation is unique. But knowing the basic like basic structure of what you can and can't do will help you avoid some of the misconceptions or the challenges that veterans face give you a quick background about myself so i'm one of the instructors just like lourdes here at uh, va housing education my background is in lending 18 years in the lending space and also real estate instructor mrp instructor for the military and uh i'm sure i do oh i've been in this uh, military for 14 years in the army so love what i do and love giving back so lourdes you want to introduce yourself yeah, my name is Loris Fernando. I served 11 years in the Army National Guard. Uh, currently, I'm a veteran, and I've used my VA loan a couple times, and I am a real estate agent here in the Chicagoland area, and I focus on helping VA clients actually utilize their benefits, not just with housing, but with different, different organizations as well. I um, am a Keller Williams Regional ambassador for the midwest uh, for my company and then also i'm on the agent leadership council for keller williams uh, my office as well so i do give back a lot of time i love to educate and i'm also an instructor here with va housing education that's awesome and that's one of the things when it comes to veteran resources like i'll talk to a lot of times with veterans about their education benefits it's not even like let's say housing related but in a way it is because you know it's a way to move forward by either gaining more education making more money or you know getting the additional bh while you're going to school it just kind of depends on all your situation so the first thing we're going to cover guys is understanding the common myth so lordis what is a common myth veterans run into um one of the ones that they run into all the time or at least they tell me is i can only use my va benefit once and that is absolutely not true whatsoever you can use it as many times as you want to and if you and i know we're going to go into a lot more detail in a little bit but but yeah so that's one of the ones that i get asked all the time is no. we can only use it once and that's not yeah. true and i and i get that too but along with that right the what i think a lot of people our minds are blown is that you can use it unlimited times but you can also have multiple va loans at the same time now, this isn't a math class, so we're not going to like break it down, but you do have a cap before you have to do a down payment, uh, but you can, uh, you do have the ability to have multiple VA home loans at the same time. Not, not buying two of them at once, but you can, you can buy multiple. Perfect. Um, another misconception that we have is that you have to live in the property for a minimum of a year after you purchase it now that's not true right david no well, no 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 that's uh the, yeah so a common thing that people will come up with it is that they're like oh you have to wait a year or you have to wait two years before uh, you can rent out your property there is no time limit uh you intend to occupy the property within 60 days of purchasing it uh, which leads me into my my kind of my next piece is that there are times when you can buy a VA home loan and not live in it, right? It's designed to be your primary residence. Things change. That's okay. This rule applies primarily for active duty individuals. So for example, if you're stationed in, uh, let's say in the Columbus, Georgia, Fort Benning, and your spouse is going to school in Chicago, you can actually use your VA home loan benefit and purchase a property for them to live in it. As long as it's a spouse or child that's occupying the property, you can do that. Otherwise, you really have to typically move in within 60 days, but they do offer up to a year long before you could you have to move in. So flexibility on that. Perfect. Another misconception that we have is, can you turn your VA home loan into an investment property? Now, this is something dear to my heart, so thank you for letting me cover this topic. But um, yes, you can totally do that. You don't even have to refinance your property. If you do have enough entitlement, you can purchase another property still on the same VA entitlement. 
And there's a whole class that we could do about that. But just to let you know, you can do that, which is awesome. Uh, you just do have to find a renter. So we need that six month or we need that one year lease and then you'll be able to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's uh, and that's the nice component of that. And can, and another one that we get to is that can you straight up buy an income property? And the answer to that is yes and no. <laughs> it's kind of uh, the, the, the V loan is phenomenal because you can buy what's called a multi-unit property, right? So in Chicago, they're very popular. And then in other parts of the country, they are as well. That's where you're buying a property that has two, three or four apartment units, but you're buying it all together, right? Just think of it like a condos. So you can actually rent out the other units, offset your mortgage and basically live mortgage free. I mean, Lord, as we've helped hundreds of clients do that around uh, the Chicagoland area and across the country. And a lot of that just comes down to looking at the numbers and what they look like to be able to do that. We do every year we do a class on buying income properties with the VA loan, how to leverage it as a resource. So again, a lot of the stuff that we have, uh, you can check out some of our courses or some of our contents on here. And then some of our courses are going to be actually uh, on our website that you can sign up for and check out. So we talked about some of the common misconceptions, which again, this applies across the country. So let's talk about some of the benefits of the VA home loan and why veterans should be at least looking at this as an option. Uh, Cause we know that veterans do get steered away from the VA loan, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. One of my favorite uh, benefits is that there's no money down. Now there's still some closing costs, so a lot of people say, hey, there's nobody down. I'm, I'm going to buy a house with nothing. There's still some costs associated <laughs> with it. But unlike other, other loans like FHA, conventional portfolio loans, the VA home loan is no money down. So there are costs, but no down payment. It sounds like a song to me, like no money <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and with no money down on top of this, now this is where it gets kind of crazy. And, and uh, this is, I think a lot of people have misconception around it. If you don't have an outstanding V home loan at the time of closing, right? So you don't have a V loan. Great. You are going to sell your current property and buy another one, sell and buy same day. You're good. There's no limit on what you can purchase as long as you're eligible and qualified. So you want to buy a $5 million multi-unit property or a $5 million home, you can do so with zero money down. Now, I'm not saying everyone should be doing that, but at least it know, you know you have that option because in certain areas, like high-cost areas, uh, like let's say in D.C., average home prices are a million, right? But a lot of people still think there's caps on them and then they think... Uh, or lenders still tell them today that there's a cap on how much they could borrow. And that's just not true. So this is why we do what we do. So you guys can educate yourselves on that process um, and how all of that works. And we had yeah. actually a, a good question. We had someone that uh, had a question around the VA home loan is that uh, what about the credit score? Now, when it, and I'll, I'll cover that quickly right now is that when it comes to credit score, the VA home loan technically doesn't have a minimum credit score requirement, but lenders do. So typically, like like, like from like folks we work with, it goes down to 500 credit score on up. But just kind of be aware that anything under that 620 can cause you to incur additional fees and the rates are typically going to be higher on those programs. So it is just something to be aware of. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to not disqualify yourself, but talk with a lending professional and see what you can do uh, for that qualification component, right? We never want to be able to see that. So again, so yeah, so no limit. Uh, there's no restrictions on that. And we'll also go over what property types you can purchase with. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, David. Um, the next thing we're talking about is no private mortgage insurance. Uh, this is huge because with other loan products you do have to pay um, the pmi and with via home loans you don't have to so that can save you anywhere between a hundred to i mean five six hundred dollars a month which is an awesome benefit david why don't we pay pmi well because the va guarantees 25 percent of the loan so like that, that's a nice piece of that. And the funny thing is, is that I just learned this recently. If you were to do a 25% down payment, uh, you technically use no entitlement and you just, you have a VA home loan label, 
we're just doing something like this for someone right now, which I'm like, this is the first time I've run into that. But yes, no private mortgage insurance. It's phenomenal. And the nice thing too with VA home loans is they typically are going to be lower interest rates than any other loan product. And right now, and I'm telling you the gap, uh, you know, we should have a whole class just on the, like what's happening in the financing business, but uh, that's going to exist where the rates are going to be lower on VA loans. Now that's not, uh, I, should, I don't know how I tread this, is that you have to be really careful around the VA home loan because average closing costs across the country is 3%. Veterans pay 5 to 6% in closing costs because they go with these big name brain, uh, brands that market to them every day, follow them on social media. They got cool comedians that are on there. And guess what? They got to pay lots of money for that marketing so that it does get passed on to the veterans. So just be really careful uh, around, around the VA home loan. Uh, for that. Yeah. Another good thing that I really like about, um, the VA home loan is a fast processing and, uh, technically I know we already covered this, but no minimum credit score. So the credit scores are, are from bank specific, not through the VA. So if one bank turns you down for credit, uh, if you don't have over a 640, we can't, you know, can't do anything with you. That doesn't necessarily that another bank can't do it. So right. that's one of the things that you do have to, to ask around is, you know, based on my credit score and will it make the financial sense to actually do it? Like we talked about before, even if they can approve you, are you okay with the eight, 9% interest rate because of your credit scores? So you do have to be very careful with that and just make sure that it's going to be um, okay with you. The numbers do make some sense. And then fast processing, people think that VA loans can take, or they have to take, you know, 60 days. And this is one misconception. Every time I submit offers for my clients, they're like, yeah, VA loans take forever. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, it, no they don't. Uh, so just as long as your lender knows what they're doing, it can typically take anywhere between two weeks all the way up to about 30, 35 days is like the, the average on a VA home loan. Yeah. And that's like maybe with like a VA condo approval or something like that. So, um, and then we had some questions here. Yeah. So I'll answer some of these other on here. Right. So the, like Laura said with lower credit score, all it means is that the rates is going to be a little bit higher, but you might qualify for less because of that. So again, if you're at 500 or above, the VA will allow it through a manual underwrite. I'm not going to get too technical, Lourdes. You know how I am. I'll get super technical on this stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely possible to do that. Uh, and then I will also answer one other question, which we were going to be covering in a little bit. But can you get a VA loan with 90% disability and no employment? Yes, you can. We do it all the time. So disability is a income. And even if you just received it day one, you can use all of that income, right? So you can, uh, the only thing you might have to be cognitive about is that there's still closing costs on a VA loan. But yes, yeah, so you can do qualify with solely disability income to purchase a property. So great question on that. Thank you so much for that. And I know I asked you this when I was looking for my property, but I was in school when I were initially looking for my first property. If you're using a post 11 GI bill, you can't use that income, right, David? Yeah. So for the, yeah, so th that's a, it's right in the VA handbook. Also guys want to note that everything we talk about is out of the VA handbook. So we're not just like pulling things out of thin air or lender overlays and all these things. Like all this is public information. Yeah. So you cannot use house uh, school benefits uh, like BH because you're going to school to qualify for a home loan. Some people are like dual military and they both are collecting disability and they're both going to school full time. That's awesome. You can use it as assets for closing costs, but your actual, uh, what's it called? The actual disability income can be used for that. Uh, so, and I know you're going to talk about disability here next. From my end, there's a one thing that is associated with the VA home loan. It's called the VA funding fee. It's the only fee that's going to be charged to a veteran unless they have the service connection, right? Uh, it's the only fee that gets rolled into the mortgage. Closing costs when you're buying a home do not get rolled into the mortgage. That is a common question that we get. Like, can I roll my closing costs into my mortgage on a purchase? On a refinance, yes, because you already own the home. On a purchase, no, unless you have a great realtor that can negotiate seller credits or they'll increase the price of the property and be able to give that to you, right? That's the only time. 
The VA funding fee changes based on a couple of things. It does not based on branch of service or rank or anything like that. It's based on how many times you've used it, first time, subsequent use, and are you putting money down? People think the VA loan is great when you don't because you have that option. But guess what? After the second, uh, first time you use it, the VA funding fee goes up to three point one five percent. So you got to think about that. You're buying a half million dollar place. Now you're talking about like what seventeen thousand dollars in funding fee that gets rolled into the mortgage. The VA loan is phenomenal, but then they also kind of make it an incentive to, for you to put money down because it goes from 3.15 to you put 5% down, it drops to one and a half. So it's pretty awesome in, in, in that sense as far as the VA funding fee. But see, Lourdes has got the sweet one talking about service connection because like that's kind of where it's at. Yeah. So service connection, disability, um, I'm a disabled veteran, which is great. So if you do have a service connected disability, um, must have a minimum 10% service connected disability rating, it waives your VA funding fee. You are exempt from the VA funding fee. So I know these subsequent uses, you can use it as many times as you want. So when I purchased my property, it was the second one. First one, I wasn't a disabled veteran after I was, and I didn't have to pay a VA funding fee, which was awesome because my second purchase was a lot bigger than my my first one. So that was awesome. <laughs> Great savings there. Um, also, it, if you are a Purple Heart recipient while on active duty, you do not pay a VA funding fee. And then in some states, not all, but some states, property tax breaks can happen if you have a service-connected disability rating. Here in Illinois, anything over 70%, you don't pay property taxes up to $250,000 equalized assessed value, which depends on the rate can be anywhere. Um, if it's $850,000 below uh, and below, then it covers you are fully exempt. Anything above that, then you do have to pay a proration of 100%. And then in some other counties here in Illinois, anything over $250,000 equalized assessed value, they do not um, honor that at all. So um, de definitely check with your county and just make sure that you are, um, you know, you don't want to buy a million dollar property if it's not going to be <laughs> exempt all the way um, and or you do have to pay a little bit of taxes. So if you you do need help with um, resources on service connection, disability, who to go, what to do, who to talk to, um, you can go ahead and contact us. We can uh, connect you to those resources. That's awesome. Uh, good point on that, uh, Lourdes. And I'll also put on here if you guys want to schedule uh, a call with us or have any questions. Uh, this is where you can do that. You guys can always just go to vahousingeducation.com, uh, go to our partner resources, and you can schedule a call with Lourdes or myself uh, just for a consultation on on anything that you want uh, to talk about. So that's good, Lourdes. Thank you for that. Yeah, the uh, If you definitely haven't started the VA disability process, I'm not saying that every veteran's got a problem from service, but I'm saying that every veteran's got a problem from service, right? There's There's something that comes up that you can file for, talk with the VSO, and at least start the paperwork. It doesn't hurt to just start that process. And there's a lot of good resources out there. I'm going to talk about uh, VA assumptions. One of the things that we hear or we enter on a daily basis is that I wish I would have bought a home when rates were 2.5%. And they're like, well, those days are long gone. They are long gone. But the cool thing about uh, FHA loans, VA loans, and USDA loans is that they're all assumable. That means that if you, I'm just going to use VA loans as an example, because otherwise, again, we'll spend like an hour on one thing, is that let's say Lourdes has a property, which she does, and she used her VA home loan. I come in and I say, well, Lourdes, you're selling your place for uh, $500,000, but your mortgage balance is six hundred uh, is uh, 460000 right? So there's a 40000 gap. I can actually substitute her entitlement with mine. So I put my benefits onto her property, take her two and a quarter interest rate, and then she frees up her benefits and she's good to go. I The downside is I have to come up with that 40000 Right, so that that's the thing. But a lot of veterans don't realize is they can tap into 401ks or anything else like that. Let me give you a quick example. Some people might say, "Well, why would I liquidate a 401k or do something like that in order to you to buy a home?" 
You buy a half a million dollar property at two and a quarter interest rate. Your total repayment is about $650,000. That same $500,000 today, you'll pay about $1.4 million in total payments. That's a significant, that's $800,000 in interest you're pocketing by not doing that. So it's just some food to think about. Uh, and one thing that lawyers talk about is that you don't need to use your VA home loan in order to get the property tax exemption. You just need to be on the title of the property. So if you have parents that live with you that uh, have a service connection, you can add them to title and you have the exemption. So it's also just something to, to keep in mind. And VA loan assumptions are also a great tool to uh, create wealth because you're, if you're older, your children could assume the rate and everything else. So it's pretty cool on that. But more to follow on that. But Lourdes, let's talk about what type of properties you can purchase with the VA home loan. Okay, perfect. Um, do we want to address any of the questions that we have, or do we? Uh, want let me to wait take a look if there. Oh man, we had a we had a we had a lot of questions pop up. Hold on one second. Uh, someone asked about uh, if the VA loan allows uh, for properties that need repairs. Yes, we're going to talk about the the VA renovation loan. So that's going to be something that's pretty cool. Uh, someone's asking if a buyer probably with a partner who's non-military, do like get both scores and incomes? Great question. I'm actually going to cover a whole section on who can be on VA home loans and how they actually work. So I'll cover that shortly. Oh, so this is a good question on this. Uh, what does the closing cost cover and what's the average amount? So there's a lot of things that go into closing costs. Primarily, it's going to be lender fees, uh, third-party lender costs, like, uh, like getting the appraisal, any type of credit report, any type of certificates get passed on. You will have title insurance that you need to get, which is a way to ensure that when you take the ownership of the property, it's actually like free and clear of any issues, right? That's title. Sometimes you have to pay the state taxes and then you have to set up your taxes and insurance and your monthly payment. Even if you're exempt from paying the uh, taxes, you have to normally get set up with them. There's times where you can omit that. So on average, it's about 3% across the country. If you're not working with like the big lending institutions, otherwise it's five to 6%. But again, with the smaller ones, it will be covered underneath that. So that's a great question. Oh, we have a great, we have a shout out here uh, from, uh, Maurice, Joseph Morris is the greatest. He worked hard for me and my family. No closing costs. That's uh, Lord is his uh, business partner. Uh, so thank you for that, guys. Yeah, always helping military families uh, become homeowners. It's what we love to do. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. So let's, the, let's talk about the types of properties you can use with the VA home loan. Yeah, so... There are a few different types of properties. Um, first is the most common um, people. You can buy a single family home. You can buy a plan unit development, which is a long word for a subdivision or townhome. Uh, you can also purchase a condo. Uh, and even if the building is not approved by the VA Department of Affairs, you can still purchase that with obtaining a waiver. We do have classes all around, all around that, but a lot of people don't use their VA benefit because it's cash or conventional only. So <laughs> that's not the case here with VA home loans. Uh, definitely ask us if you have some questions around that. Yep. Multi-units, one of my favorites. If you have them in the area, it's a great opportunity. I was able to purchase a four unit. I live in one and I rent out the other three. So I'm able to create some cash flow and have other people pay my mortgage so I don't have to. So that's one of my favorite properties. You can buy a manufactured home as long as it's attached to a foundation. So if it is not attached to the foundation, the VA wouldn't, um, and most banks wouldn't be able to, to do that. But if it is attached to a foundation, you're good to go. You can also get a farm residence and there's also no acreage restriction. David, can you touch on those farm residents and no acreage restrictions, please? Yes, I would like one, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can definitely buy a property that has a farm on it. And like, like it mentions, there's no acreage restriction. So you want to buy a 200 piece of acre 
plot of land, you can do so. You just have to be really careful about that because it really gets down to more of an individual basis. Because if you have a thousand acres and the home, let's say it's a million dollar property, but the home is only worth like fifty thousand dollars, you're going to start running into those types of issues. Uh, if you have farmland, you can't use that income to qualify for a home loan. You think like, and it makes it, it would make sense. You think that because on V on the multi unit. You can use rental income to qualify, but on a farm residence, you can't do that. But just to be very careful about that. Uh, let me go into what type of uh, type of VA home loans exist out there. And I'll answer some of the questions that folks have. And please, guys, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. And then once this video is done, we'll also continue answering these questions uh, on the platform. So please, you know, let us know. Right, so we have it. The first one is pretty straightforward, which is a purchase transaction. So you can purchase any of the buildings that Lord is talking about. You can do a cash out refinance up to 100% of the value of your property. As long as it's your primary residence, you can cash the whole thing out. Right now, does it make sense? Not necessarily. Maybe doing a HELOC, home equity line of credit, will make more sense. And we'll do videos later on how to tap into equity in your property when you have a low interest rate. For the brave, for the people that are purchasing properties now, you have an option later when in with an interest rate reduction refinance loan. It's super simple. It's cheap, uh, depending who you work with. Like normally, it's just like less than two grand. You can do it. Uh, so right now, I want to talk a little bit about the state of where we're at with the interest rates and home and home values. And this is what I. This is my opinion. Um, that you could probably quote me on it in a year from now and be like, this is exactly what happened. <laughs> so in a high rate environment, you have a very big slowdown in people selling and buying properties. So what that means is it's the time to get in because as next year rolls around, which they already predicted the rates are going to drop, it's going to be the same thing that happens every single time, every single time. Rates drop, property values go up, and there's a lot of interest in properties. So now you're not paying less. You're paying still more because you have a higher value. Yeah, rates drop a little bit, but you're still covered in that. When you buy a property, you lock in that value. You lock in at least the amount that you owe. So if you refinance into a lower rate and a lower rate, that's what people did in 2001, 2002. They jumped on the bandwagon when they were paying higher rates before that. So right, remember, you're not the only one that's going through that. It's a lot of people... Uh, that are going through that, that are thinking about that process. But we're already starting to see, you know, so wheels start turning for people that are like getting onto this to be like, I can actually do this. All right. You can build a home with a new construction loan. I'm not saying buying a new construction, right, from like a Schumacher or something like that. They're building it home. But I'm saying when you want to finance your own property, that includes land acquisition and the construction of the property. So that's a pretty cool option for some folks. You can't build yourself, but you can hire a builder. Somebody asked about rehab loans. Yes, you could do rehab loans with VA home loans. There's a lot of flexibility around uh, rehab loans. Uh, so if you want to do, let's say, put a new roof on and put, you know, need $20,000. Okay, that's an option to do a rehab loan, or you might need $150,000. You can do that as well. The challenge right now on rehab loans on the property you already own is the interest rate. I would suggest doing a home equity line of credit or a fixed second mortgage to be able to keep that super low rate. Because as soon as you refinance it, it's going to double. And like you really don't want to be in that spot. So be careful. Uh, and you can also get energy efficient mortgages, which they give you like a $6,000 credit to be able to do something like that. But now we're going to go into uh, who can be on a VA home loan uh, let me see if there's any questions that are on here. Yep, oh, yep. Thank you. So instead, I definitely have to reach out about the multi-unit properties. Yeah, like yeah, we definitely love doing them, and it's just a ton of opportunity that you can do that uh, with that. Another question that we had is, can you build a multi-unit with the loan? Yes, you can. So if you're looking to uh, build a, a multi-unit property and do a construction loan, you can do that with the VA loan if it's allowed for the types of properties that Lourdes went over, then you are allowed to, to build it. Now, if it's a condo or plan unit development, obviously you can't build those, uh, but the other ones 
you can. So kind of keep uh, keep that in mind when it comes to that. So yeah, let's kick it off with who can actually be on the VA home loan. I get this all the time. Uh, <laughs> the veteran can be the veteran can be on the loan uh, as a sole owner, a title holder, no fiance, no parents, no brothers, sisters, cousins. <laughs> none of not, nobody other than your spouse so that is the only person a veteran and their spouse if they're not legally married if they've been living together for 20 years it doesn't matter they have to be legally married for both the parties to go on on title uh, not on title but on the va home loan and then if both spouses are going they are going to count both incomes both liabilities and then both are going to be on title. So there was a case where I didn't have any debt. I went on on the mortgage with my spouse. I didn't have any income, but uh, I had really good credit. They used they used his credit. His credit was a little bit lower, but I was okay to be on that title. They used my entitlement at that point because when we were going to PCS, the goal was to have his entitlement be used. That way, you know, if I'm working or not working, it's not going to be an issue. So that is okay. Now, if, um, let's see, both, both on title, the property. Now, if you do, if you do run into a situation where there's dual, there's dual parties, like I was a veteran and my, um, my ex was a spouse, then it would, uh, it would work out. You can, you can do that, but some lenders will try to use both of your entitlement. So that's another thing that you have to be very, very careful with. So, so make sure that you're working with a lender that, that knows not to do that. Uh, go, David. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and that kind of gets a little bit crazy. And just so we'll touch one thing on that is that if a veteran and a spouse are purchasing together, if the veteran's the sole person on the mortgage, the spouse can be untitled, right? So just trying to clarify that. All right. I'm going to go over one of the questions that was asked. It, can, a veteran and a non-veteran can purchase a property together. It's called a uh, VA joint home loan application. The process is different and the requirements are a little bit different. So the first thing is, is that the non-veteran has to put a 12.5% down payment. Earlier, Lourdes asked me, why do VA loans, they don't pay private mortgage insurance? Because the VA guarantees 25% of the loan. If 50% of 25% is 12.5%. So that's why the non-veteran has to put a 12.5% down payment. Uh, we get that question a lot with like fiancés. I just tell people, well, just go to the courthouse and get married. What's what are you? Why are you waiting so long? <laughs> so um, I just joke on that one. Uh, but the that veteran is. must meet the residual income. That's like a whole separate way the VA looks at income. They don't look at DTI. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then a veteran and a veteran can also purchase a property and they split their benefits 50 50. so the challenge is is that you have to have enough entitlement to split 50 50. if the other person has outstanding va home loans you take away from that so you have to be really careful on how that goes so the uh, next thing we're going to talk about is going to be eligibility requirements for the va home loan so if you served on active duty six months or more during peacetime like you're currently serving right now uh 90 days or more if you're in active uh in during wartime if you served in the national guard six years going to all your drills and all your annual trainings don't miss out on anything or if you did 90 consecutive days in title 10 orders like if you had a deployment, even if you served one day, like you went through basic training, got out, deployed, 90 or, or more than 90 days, you qualify. And then the VA uh, came out with a circular in 21, because that's when I was deployed, because Lourdes and I helped a client that was a, a Title 32 orders. You need 90 cumulative days of Title 32 orders which includes 30 consecutive days. And it's like title 502, 503. There's a couple different ones. And so veterans, a lot of National Guard members don't realize they already qualify. Uh, so don't disqualify yourself. That's my number one thing. And then if you're in the reserve, it's just straight six years or 90 consecutive days in title 10. If you served in the active army for 24 plus months, and then you join the guard, you still already have your benefits and surviving spouses. If a veteran passes away on 
um, while in service, the loan gets passed on to the spouse. If the veteran is out of the service and passes away from service-connected disability, the same thing applies to that. Uh, actually, we had a question from somebody about the... Uh, so you avoid that 12.5% if you're married. That's how much marriage is worth in that case. 12.5%. <laughs> but yes, you 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 basically you and it's you just need to have a court marriage is all you need. So typically as long as you do it at least a week before week and a half before closing, then you're good. Uh, if you're thinking about doing name changes within that week and a half, don't because you're not going to close. It won't happen. You could just do what's called a quick claim deed later and get that updated. You can get a copy of your certificate by going to va.gov. Uh, the other thing that you can do as well is you can schedule a call with us and we'll pull your certificate of eligibility and get that over to you. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward uh, on that component. I'm also going to cover qualification requirements just from because I'm from the lending side, like we know a lot of this. Uh, so one W-2 employment, if your W-2, it's pretty straightforward from that sense. Typically, they look at last two years of work history, but you don't need it. They allow job gaps. There's so much flexibility. If you're working a full time job right now, don't disqualify yourself. Uh Definitely reach out. If you're self-employed, they look at typically two years, but they allow for one year. So keep that in mind. VA disability, income can be used right away. It could be your slow, sole income. If you have retirement pension, same thing. You can use that sole income. Social security, you can use all that income. Part-time, two years to in order to use that income. And if you're transitioning from school to the civilian sector, then uh, you can... Just basically, you document your work history as your school. So it's kind of cool that you can be able to do that. Uh, and then you typically need to have, uh, and your spouse also will qualify under the same standards as the VA home loan, which makes it phenomenal on that uh, to be able to, to do something like that. But Lourdes, talk to us a little bit about renting versus buying and just kind of like, what are some of those considerations for that? Yeah, so I, I definitely get this question asked all the time, you know, hey, the interest rates are super high. There's 7% right now. And I'm like, yeah, that's 7% on a mortgage payment, but that's 100% that you're going to pay a landlord, like 100%. You're actually paying their mortgage. So uh, if it makes sense for you, then then definitely. Some people, I know I have um, a seller who sold their condo. They're like, we're going to wait a little bit, and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do between jobs and the others. So, so different scenarios do, do make sense, but uh, a mortgage payment um, can be right now with interest rates a little bit higher than, than rentals at some point. But right now what we're seeing is because the interest rates are so high, the mortgage payments are higher. Now rents are going through the roof. I, I did talk to one of my friends and they're going to, uh, they they told him, hey, you have three months to find a new place. He's been there eight years and no increase in rents or anything like that. They're going to get him out because now the rents are so, so high. So now he has nowhere to, to go within that budget. So now he has to figure out what he's going to do. So you don't ever know what's going to happen. They can always just give you the boot. Uh, market conditions and inventory and mortgage rates is is another thing when we're considering budget. So if it makes sense for you, then definitely weigh your pros and cons. If you're a disabled veteran, you do get that tax exemption uh, in some states, then it might be more beneficial for you to purchase because it's going to be cheaper than for you to rent. Okay. Some of the goals, uh, you definitely want to look at your, your long-term goals. How long are you going to be living in this property? Now, this is, this is big when it comes to what to spend. So if you're qualified for $600,000, but you, for example, aren't going to be in this position for that long, then you might not want to use your entitle, your entire entitlement. You want to save that so you can have multiple, multiple properties. Also, are you planning to retire anytime soon? So some people say, Hey, I, I had a client that said I wanted to purchase $200,000 because I want to go to Florida to retire. So I don't want to 
to like go big on this property. Take so, so I know, right? Well, you pack me in the bag. Um, and then also, uh, is is part of your strategy to gain investment properties? So we have a client that we're working with right now. They have a client in Texas. They're stationed here now. They want to get a property here. So we're really running the numbers just to make make sure that it's going to make financial sense for him. Are you going to be able to get another property on your same entitlement when you get stationed somewhere else or maybe start with a condo and then get a single family home, et cetera. So, so there, there's a lot of, a lot of planning that goes involved. So definitely talk to, uh, talk to us, talk to your real estate professional, just to make sure that whatever goals you have are in alignment with what you're trying to do with the VA home loan. Are you trying to stack, try to put multiple properties on, on one entitlement or what exactly are you trying to do? Also, the stability, the needs, your wants, your must-haves, your deal breakers are all very, very important when it comes to looking at properties. So if you can really sit down and identify what property is going to be the best for you and your family, definitely stick to those and then tell your, your real estate professional. We spend a lot of time going over needs. What is this a must have or is this a, you know, you know, a deal breaker <laughs> type of thing. But these things are very, very important for us to know when we're going into the search, because you don't want to, you know, every single house that you see on Redfin, you don't want to say like, Hey, uh, I want to see all these 30, 30 homes, you know, cause I qualify from, we want to break it down so that we're really focused, hyper focused on what your needs and your wants are, how many numbers of bedrooms, how many bathrooms, and then also our schools being your transportation. If you don't drive and you need to be by public, public transportation, that can be a must have because if you're stuck somewhere and you got to take the bus and in some areas of the world where it snows, which I'm still not used to and I've been here for five years, <laughs> it's important because things like that do matter. So, so definitely identify what your needs are, what your wants are, and your must haves make sure it's in line with your long-term goals, your short-term goals. And, and most importantly, make sure everything is in budget. You need to make sure that it stays within that umbrella of your comfort level. I have a lot of people that say right now I'm paying $1,500, $1,300 in rent. And this mortgage payment is close to $2,000, but I'm okay with that. Just make sure it makes financial sense and then get with your mortgage professional I know when, when I, I took on, you know, a huge mortgage payment, I'm all like, Oh my God, can I really do this? But when I ran the numbers, I was like, you know what, this, this will make a ton of sense. And, and being able to, to work with professionals to be able to identify that would be perfect. That's awesome. Lawrence. Thank you for that. And so what I'm going to do right now, guys, I'm going to go through buying considerations and renting considerations, think to think about, and we're going to move right into the home buying steps, but I'm going to answer a couple questions here is uh, how big of a uh, multi-unit you can buy. There's no limit as long as you're eligible and qualified. So if you want to, if you qualify for a $2 million place, you can do so with no money down. Uh, another question that was asked is that uh, we have agents across the nation. Uh, so wherever you're looking to get connected with, we'll be able to help you find a qualified agent that understands working with military members. Uh, Randy had a good question. Uh, is there any assisted living properties that you can buy for us older veterans with the VA home loan? That's a good question. I actually am, I can't answer that right now, but I'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, Randy, you got my cell phone. You can actually hit me up. <laughs> uh, but I believe you can purchase a property uh, with uh, like a 55 plus community. The VA does allow for that. So that, that is just something to uh, that you should be able to do. But uh, definitely let's connect offline on that. All right, I'm going to run through the buying considerations, right? Buying, you do have upfront costs. You do have to maintain the property and you have to pay for those repairs, right? That's a downside, right? On renting, the landlord takes care of all that. Like something breaks, it could be like the lights are out and i'll be like i don't want to fix them myself i just pick up the phone call them and they do it themselves right so it gives you that flexibility and also when you're looking at the types of properties like a single family a condo or a multi-unit the responsibility load is different but you also have different costs associated with that right a single family home you got to mow the lawn you got to do all these repairs a condo you just kind of kick back relax and be like well they're going to do the work for me, but then you pay HOA dues, right? So if you had a single family home, 
but then they're also going to be more expensive, right? So all of lifestyle, all of that's going to be factored in, right? If you love living in the city, why would you buy a farm residence? You know, that's a lot of work. Like all your weekends, all the times you have fun are going to be taken away. So just kind of kind of think about that Unless too. You get a mower. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to be <laughs> mowing along with a big, big <laughs> tractor. Yeah, I have a buddy who did that. Um, and the other thing too, right? With uh, renting is you do pay someone else's mortgage, but on the flip side, you can, if you want to change locations, you can do that. But for families, sometimes it's tough because if they increase rent so much and you have to move school districts, it's kind it kind of sucks, right? Let's be honest. Like, it, it, you, you know, you don't want to do that. So everyone's situation is different, right? You have a service connected disability. You didn't realize that you don't pay property taxes. That's a changer. I'll give you a quick example. In Cook County or in Lake County in Illinois, you buy like a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. The mortgage payment on that is like eighteen hundred a month, but then taxes are like another thousand a month. So it makes for some people that's out of reach. But if they have the connect the service connection, they can make it work. So there's cool benefits to it, but there's also um, considerations for renting especially if the values are just all over the place but let's go into the home buying steps and like how what you can do uh so for the first part you know you want to connect with a lender right you want to get a pre-approval you want to be able to find out exactly uh what your left and right limits are for purchasing a property and making sure that when you go out with someone you're actually set to go for that you have to submit all your documents I would also submit a blood sample because if a lender's not asking you for your pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, not reviewing all your documents, requesting your certificate of eligibility, you're wasting your time because I get those calls all the time when clients get denied a week before closing. Uh, Lord, as you run into that, you actually call me a lot. Um, and it's something that could have been avoided if they just would have reviewed the stuff. No, A lot of people don't know how to. So make sure whoever you work with knows how to do that. Now, once you're pre-approved, right, which should take a day, now you're off talking with the realtor. And what happens next, Lourdes? Yeah, so when you talk with the realtor, it's really important for you to understand what we spoke about in the last, uh, what uh, the last section, what is your budget, what you're looking for, and then your long-term goals. Those are gonna be the three top things that you have to identify before you really start looking at properties. So when you get your pre-approval, you're like, oh, I'm ready to go. Here are all these, you know, all these houses. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one's way over your budget. Are you sure this is something that you want to do? I'm going to show prop. If a client wants to see it, they're going to see it. But just to understand, you know, that we're staying within those parameters are very, very important as a consumer. Uh, and the reason I, I harp on the budget so much is because we, when we first purchased a property, the taxes were through the roof. I didn't have my VA disability rating. And that, uh, this is the reason what encouraged me to apply. And because the taxes went from 6,000 to $10,000 and we were on one income. I didn't have a job. I wasn't working. I was, I tried Uber like three rides and I was like, can't do it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I had to change, change into a different career. But um, it was it was really difficult and we tapped into different resources. We had to sell the home. We were super cash, cash negative. Uh, we were cash poor, house poor uh, is, is the terminology. So so definitely identify those three things. Once you identify those, then then get in, start looking at these properties and and start to really identify the deferred maintenance, the you know, all the all the costs associated with that, just to make sure that it's going to be a good a good investment. Then you make an offer for what you're comfortable with. If you're working with an experienced uh, agent, they're going to show you a comparative market analysis to show what all the homes have sold for in the area, just to make sure that your offer is being competitive. And then uh, at the same time, you're not going to overpay and, and make sure that they do that. Once you get, once you submit an offer, then you get a, uh, an accepted offer then you do have to put some money up. There is the earnest money, which takes the property off the market. And there's also a home inspection. Now, some people just do the home inspection and that's all they do. You can also do a, a termite inspection, which is required through the VA. You can also do a plumbing inspection. 
lead-based paint inspection. I mean, there's inspections. You just want to make sure that you're doing your proper due diligence. It is very expensive, um, anywhere between 500 up to $1,000 if you are doing additional testing. But these are investments that you're making up front, just so on the back end, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I know sewer lines can be up to $7,000, which are crazy. So definitely make sure you do those those inspections. And David, do you want to talk about the loan process? Yeah. And I'll also talk a little bit about the pre-approval. We had a couple of questions in here. So one of them was, how long is a pre-approval good for? It's only good for 90 days. That's it. Uh, and the reason why is because a credit inquiry is only good for 90 days. It's not two years like they keep pumping out on the internet from lending side, like finance side. We just look at the last 90 days. That's it. And then it falls off. Uh, and so it doesn't affect you anymore uh, after that. And someone else had a good question too. Are property taxes a separate payment from your mortgage payment? No, your mortgage payment is uh, your taxes are rolled into your mortgage payment until your taxes are, until your tax exempt. Or if you qualify with the tax exemption, then they won't be included. That's the only time you'll have to pay for them yourself. So the loan process, I think this is where a lot of people get frustrated because they don't do the pre-approval correctly. A lot of moving pieces. And I'll tell you that in every transaction, something goes wrong. It's about the team you're working with and how they fix it. But from loan processing, you go, you uh, you know, then the real work starts. Then it's going to be like, oh man, I, I have to look through 120 pages just for my loan application. Do I need an attorney to do this? <laughs> we'll get that question all, all the time. Uh, and remember, in the beginning, you're just signing preliminary documents. You're nothing's finalized until you get to the closing table and you get the keys to the property. Uh, the the process is going to be signing the disclosures, lenders submitting it to processing and underwriting. That's when an underwriter looks at the file and goes like, yes, they meet the requirements. But again, a good loan officer is going to be able to tell you what they're going to look for. They order the appraisal, uh, which is ordered through the VA. Another huge misconceptions around that. I got a video being released on Thursday talking about appraisals just from that because Loris and I fight that all the time with listing agents. They're like, oh, it's a VA loan. It's horrible. Like, no, it's not. It's phenomenal. You just got to know how to utilize it. But once you go through processing, they might ask for additional documents. That's why sometimes it seems so daunting to go through the mortgage process. It's just because of the paperwork. But once you've cleared all that, you go to closing. Uh, that's when you get. Uh, that's when you find out how long, um, you know, like how much you have to bring to closing or how that process is going to work. So we had some additional questions here. Uh, do you help with finding a realtor and a bank or just both? Yeah, so we'll be able to help you with both. Like I said, from, from our end, uh, like from, from my end, I'm licensed in all 50 states. I can be able to help you guys out if you're looking for that. And then we can get, we have a referral network. Uh, we have a network of realtors across the country for that. So just want to say thank you to everyone. If you guys haven't checked uh, out, we actually got featured on va.gov's uh, blog post. Uh, and helping veterans find a home, the heart behind VA housing education. That's what we do. Uh, you guys can check out the article. Let us know what you think about it. You know, obviously we're, we're growing. We want to be able to get as many people to the channel and provide education for them. And so with that being said, uh, not only uh, we do these types of preset presentations, right? We also have an event coming up next week on how to win a home in a competitive market. For folks, like we touched earlier, rates are high, values are high. But guess what? Every property you want to make an offer on is multiple offers, right? It's multiple offers. So no matter where you are in the country, we're going to talk about the strategies behind that, right? So we're not going to cover as much of this, which is the basic information for the VA home loan, but we will cover uh, how to win in a competitive market. And again, you guys could check out our resources uh, on our website. If you have an organization that you want to get a class like this or something around VA home loans, please reach out to us. Go to VA Housing Education, schedule a call, and we'll figure something out to do with you. And again, special thank you to Blue Star Families and Chicago Veterans for coming on, talking about their resources, and sharing content like this with their organizations to empower military members to be homeowners. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Lourdes, anything else that you have to add? And then I'll check the chat. Um, you can go ahead and jump into the chat. Just thank you so much yeah. for the opportunity for us to speak today.
All right, cool. So someone said like and subscribe. Thank you, Joshua, for putting that out there. Um, put that up there. Thank you for the shout out on that. Uh, is it true? This is a good one. Is it true sellers don't usually want to sell to people with VA loans? Oh, Lord, this, this is um, it's not because they're veterans. That's not the case. It's because of the misconceptions around how the program works. So Lourdes, you know, from like, what's the number one re like resistance that you get from listing agents on that? Uh, yeah. So the listing agents aren't educated as far as what the VA home loan is and it's all about. So anytime I submit an offer, I, I put, um, probably about 10 to 15 myths um, as, as to why a VA loan is great. Cause I'm educating every single listing agent that I submit an offer for. So both my, uh, everyone on my team does it. So this is something that we do across the board. So we talk about how amazing it is and, and all the benefits. And it's even in my opinion, better than some of these other loan products. So this is what I, I preach. And it's just a lack of education that they don't know uh, with the condo waiver. They say, Hey, you know, we we're doing, uh, we have a condo right now. Hey, there's more, um, there's, there's an owner who owns more units than, um, than is allowed with other traditional financing. Is this going to be okay? Yeah, not a problem with the VA home loan. That's totally fine. That's not what we look at. So just educating the listing agents so that they can educate their sellers so they can accept our offers. And that's something that we're going to be covering in the next class uh, primarily is that educational piece on what to say to, to listing agents so they can relay that over to their sellers. Awesome. Thank you, lawyers, for knocking that out of the park as usual. Uh, that wraps it up for questions. We're one minute over our time that we said we would. But again, reach out to us. Let us know if you have questions. You guys have a great evening, and we'll talk to you guys soon.